Hi there, it's Connie Ray. Welcome to Connie Ray's Craft Room. Today I have a gorgeous tutorial for you which involves stamping and embossing. And that's all, just stamping and embossing. And stamping and embossing, sometimes that's just enough. Okay, this is embossed with silver embossing powder and just stamped with our black ink of your choice or preference. I'm using the Elegantly Said stamp set. This is a new one from the new annual catalogue, and how exciting is it? We've got a new annual catalogue out, so we've got lots of new products, new colours, all sorts of things. But this is the first one that I actually purchased because I absolutely adored the Elegantly Says um, bundle. Um, so I, this I love, absolutely love that gorgeous stamp there. It's just so, and when you stamp it, it's got such a beautiful um, print. It's so clear and crisp. And if you do it in black, it's really even more crisp. But doing it in embossing is nice. You don't uh, get to see it on the camera as elegantly as it is. But once you've done it, you will see. Or just stamp it in black or your favourite colour. But I do find that it pops with the black colour and obviously with embossing. So certainly encourage you to use your embossing or improve on your embossing skills. So the other thing I want to show you was the papers, the, um, the craft papers from the elegant set. How gorgeous are these? Again, the cameras never do these things justice. Um, but this is a, see that? That's a glittery one. How beautiful is that? Oh, it is so stunning. And that's obviously the back of that one. Uh, these are all uh, gold foil. So it's pretty hard to pick up on the camera, but it's got a gorgeous gold sheen in it. And they are just beautiful. There's so many things you... And I'm not a um, paper person. I'm a stamper, and I find it really hard to use papers. So I am trying to learn, and I am looking up some resources on how to utilise our gorgeous papers because they are beautiful and they're very addictive. Um, so I'm hopefully going to bring your project using the, the designer series papers as well. There's just so many. They're just too beautiful. I often find that I use designer series paper for um, boxes and packaging to make boxes and packaging with because it's just better for me. But I'm a stamp. But that's okay. You know, live and learn. I want to learn new things, new techniques. Look at this. You can't, as I said, you can't really appreciate it off camera, uh, on camera. You're going to appreciate it more off camera. So these are the actual 12 by 12s. And they're just, I uh, can't emphasize enough how beautiful it is. So have a look at the Elegant. I will put a link in the YouTube channel down the bottom. Just click the Show More button and you'll be able to see um, the link to the papers if you can go in. And like I said, you've got to see them in real life to appreciate them. So they're the, uh, let me see what papers they are. The, the name of them are, yeah, Simply Elegant Specialty Designer Series Paper. And it got, you can get it with the bundle, which I did, which was um, with the stamp set as well, because I loved that stamp set. All right, so let's get on to the tutorial. Try not to take up too much of your time. I hope everybody is well. I haven't seen anybody for a while, but I am getting back into it, getting back into it. You know, life is a little bit challenging at times. All right, so this is the stamp here that I'm using, and I've already done a big, bit of pre-preparation. So as you can see, it's actually... Um, it's really finely detailed. It's very pretty. Mm. Excuse me, I'm having a cup of coffee as you see. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a slim card today. And this card, because I've noticed that the slim cards are very popular now. So we've got this gorgeous slim line card with a mat. Pretty easy. So the, uh, the base is seven. Let me just get my measurements right. Uh, Yep. Okay, so it's seven in, uh, oh, I'm so rusty. Sorry, guys. Seven by six. So it's six inches in width, yes, and seven inches tall. And it's scored in the middle there at three and a half. The mat, which goes on top. Oh, my mat's in there. Okay, there's a little mat. Oh, let me grab my mat. This mat here, which is going to go on top of the card, is, uh, let me see, 5 and 13 sixteenths across and 3 and 3 eighths 
in width. Now, when that happens, I'm sure a lot of people probably go, oh, my God, and they get turned off. But there's no need to be turned off. Okay, so when you're looking at your uh, scoreboard or a, an inch ruler, you will see in the inch rulers between one and two. Uh, let me see if I can do that for you. Okay, so between mm, okay, between one and two, technically speaking, there is 16 little notches, 16 in total, from one to two. If you count all the notches, there's 16 in total. So when we go 13, 16, you go from the beginning and you count up to 13. I mentioned 14, 15, 16. So it's 5 and 13 sixteenths. And then within that same space, there's 1 inch. Starting at 1 inch, this is just a number. You can choose any number you want. But starting at 1 inch and going up to 2, for example, the notches, there's other notches there that are a little bit higher than the bottom notches. I'll see if I can show you. My cat's on my desk and she's starting to get into everything, so I'm thinking she's going to bowl everything over. Hand up, get off there, darling. Okay, so, oh, maybe I can get the screen. Yep, this is pretty better. All right, so, if you started here hypothetically, start, oh, add a line. Okay, started at the one. All these notches down the bottom here, if you count all of them, there's 16 within that space between one and two. When you, so if you're counting uh, 13 sixteenths, you count 13 of these little notches all the way up to there. All right, now then it changes if you want to change. So we're going to make the, the width of the, the mat is going to be 3 and 3 eighths. So we, actually if you, if you look really closely, you'll see that all the little notches, then there's another notch set that comes up just a fraction higher. And then there's another notch set that comes up another fraction higher, which goes to your quarters. So the next set, you're going to be doing three eighths. So you're going to be going from number one, you're going to do one, two, and three on the higher, the next highest notches. And then, as you can see, it gets one and three eighths, and then you've got halves. So if you look closely at your inch ruler, you will see what I mean. You'll see the sixteenths, you'll see the eighths, and then you'll see the normal uh, quarter and half. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, do have a look at an inch ruler, take a good note of it, and you'll see that it says, like, the bottom notches are the smallest, and the, within those, when they say sixteenths, you're counting the bottom notches, then the next tallest ones are the eighths, and then the next ones are the normal standard size that we all sort of learned at school, if we learned that at school. Okay, hopefully that helps, guys. I do apologise. I didn't mean to go into detail with that, but I know that some people get a bit confused with it, and that's understandable especially here in Australia, because we do operate in centimetres. All right, so we've got our mat, which is 5 and 13 sixteenths across and 3 and 3 eighths in width, okay, on our stamparatus. And I have already positioned my stamp onto my platform. I'm going to put that there for support to help with the stamping. Um, you do need your embossing buddy whenever you are going to be doing some embossing. We are going to be using our embossing buddy to get rid of any residue because it can get ugly. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to be embossing, embossing. So we're going to just make sure that area is really clean with our embossing buddy. We are going to be using Versamark. Versamark is the only one you should probably use for embossing. It's the best. It's sticky. It's tacky and it also um, is very clear, so it's very hard to see uh, until you emboss it. But it's certainly the only one you should be, in my opinion, be using. And I think most people who uh, do embossing or crafting use the Versamark for this purpose. All right, so I'm going to be inking up my stamp. I'll just see if I can get, I've changed my um, camera and my room too, so it's kind of like, Ooh. oh, the other thing I want to point out is uh, if you're using the Stamparatus, you will see. Here, I've moved down three notches down from the top and two and a fraction in. And then I've put my magnets on it because that's where I want it to be. Just in case it moves. You don't want it to move. And as I said, uh, this mark is very hard to see. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be stamping up. I just want to make sure that you can see what I was doing. I'm just using this case as a support. Making sure your ink is well inked on your ink pad. And I usually like to do two 
But if my paper moves, I don't worry about it. And the other thing is, uh, as you can possibly see, I have kind of, whoops, sorry, I've moved my camera. I have gone off uh, symmetry with it. I don't necessarily believe it. Oh, sorry, my camera. I'm, I'm being funny or my camera's being funny. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I haven't. I've just lined it up, but it doesn't necessarily have to sync as in the whole stamp doesn't have to fit into that particular corner. Sometimes uh, going over on the edges actually gives it more of a, a creative flow than making it rigid and sticking. So if that makes sense, I'll show you what I mean. So I've got, I've got it going up to the corner, but some parts are hanging off a little bit, and that's okay. That's exactly how I want it. So we'll just press our stamp down. Give it a nice little press. Not too high. Oh. And see, as you can see, it moved. So it's good in the sense where you already knew where your markings were. Um, but I might leave it at that in case I bodge it so that I don't have to go over it again with you. Now we're going to get our embossing powder. And I'm using our silver because I love silver and white. It's absolutely beautiful. And embossing takes practice. It's not something that everybody can do. It does take practice. But there are a few things that you learn on the way. Practice is, what did they say? Practice makes perfect. Yeah, I haven't heard that one for a while. Okay. And make sure your gun is hot before you put it to the paper. Otherwise, you'll be, you know, it, it works just much, a lot better. Can't find my words today. Okay, so. There you go, as you can see. That's just, that's before it's embossed. So it is really lovely. Really lovely. So what I'll do is I'll emboss this now, and then I'll go back and do the other side. So I'm going to turn my gun on and let it heat up a bit while it's doing that. So while your gun's heating up, hopefully you can hear me, while your gun's heating up, um, one of the things you can do is you can grab a brush and you can just have a look at your embossed, at your image. I'm just looking for my brush that I use because I can't find it right now. I have a special brush that I use. Right. Oh, there it is. Okay. So here. I just want to make sure it's clean, if that makes sense. So if there's any dusty bits that you can see on it that you don't want, just get a brush. I'm going to put on my big goggles so that I can see what I'm doing. Um, just clean up your image if you, if you feel that it needs to be cleaned up a bit. We'll tap back in. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Right, so my gun should be nice and hot by now. So I will bring it to the camera so you can see how it works. Hopefully. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hang on a second. Bear with me. Alright, so let's have a look and watch it turn. It actually turns a lot quicker than when the gun's hot than when it's not. So that's why one of the things, you know, it's advantage, the advantages of heating up your gun is it will change and it doesn't warp the paper as much. So hopefully you can see it changing and see how quick it is. And just move your gun in motion with the embossing. That's what I do. Don't leave it sitting on there too long because it will make it turn ugly. Just move with it while it's working and then that's it. And just do it once over. Yep, perfect, and then turn it off. So hopefully you saw that. Now your paper does look a bit weird, but that's okay. You just get it and shovel it back into its position. And as you can see, hopefully, sorry, I have moved my camera. As you can see, how gorgeous is that? Beautiful, huh? So easy. So let's do the other side. Not hard at all. So again, I'm going to put my card down at three, three down, and just a couple across. And that will then, we'll put it into place where I want it to be. Ooh, 
and it's going to be too high. These magnets are very strong, aren't they? Oh, they love giving me trouble. Okay, bear with me, guys. I'm just getting my magnets apart. Where's Thor when you need him? Oh my gosh. Okay. That one, and that one. And again, this should just marry up with the same position. So again, we need our embossing buddy. And that's one thing you always forget when you do stamping and you emboss it. You go back and get stuck excited. You forget to do the embossing. So make sure we do the embossing. Just to keep it clean. Okay. Again, we will be stamping up our image with our Versamo. This is very quick once you've done one. It, it doesn't take anywhere near the amount of time. There's no cutting. There's nothing. It's just like... Bang, 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 it's done so easily. And again, we're just going to be done. Press on that image just a little bit. You don't need to do CPR, but just a little bit of. There we go. I'll take off my <coughs> magnet and move my stamp and apparatus out of the way. I do like to make sure that I've got it really well covered. So don't hesitate to keep applying it if you feel like you need to, just so you've got this lovely thick embossing available on you. So don't be afraid. You can only put so much on it. All right, so again, we'll turn on the gun. Now the gun's probably still a little bit warm from the last time, which is good, but we'll just put on the gun, let it heat up again, just check to make sure that there's nothing in the way of powder that we don't want anywhere to be embossed. It's good to me. Okay. Don't like it, I'm going to get something on that because most of my powder is made. Right, again, I'm going to bring it up. Hopefully I can get it into line for you, just so you can see it. You can also emboss underneath, so don't be afraid to um, sorry, I can't talk and, think, uh, talk and do at the same time. There we go. So I'm to turn now. Just moving the gun with it. Making sure you get all your ingots. Sorry guys, I've moved out of the camera. There we go. Beautiful. And there you go. How beautiful is that? So I'm always changing my glasses. I've got my focals on and my vision ones on. It's just like playing with my glasses. Okay, so there, let me just bring that in for you. There is your embossed motifs. Aren't they beautiful? Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, again, really, really simple, is we're just going to be using, um, I love this um, sentiment here, two love stories last forever. Isn't that beautiful? Hopefully your love story has lasted forever. Okay, so I've already set it up in my other stamping tool. And I've aligned it. So I don't waste anybody's time. Hopefully I've got it right. Let's have a look. Okay. Mm, yes. Well, I might need to bring it over a bit. Just, yeah. Let me just... Reposition that. Okay. So if you have problems like me getting everything in line, um, I think the lovely Jennifer Maguire always says this, use your tea ruler. So it is factual with the tea ruler. I'll just get this in line. Oh, I need one of my magnets. I'm only going to stamp this in black. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to emboss it. You can emboss it if you want with black, but I prefer not to. I might just bring that up a bit. Maybe I'm not it. They're a little bit different in terms of... Yep, 
Perfect. All right. So put it in place. Now you can use your um, memento, I think. You can use any bright ink that you want. I use Versafine because that's my preferred ink for um, ooh, ew, stamping. Um, but Versa uh, Memento works perfectly. There's no reason why you can't. I just like this ink and I use it all the time. So and I've got it on hand, you know. We've got so many products, and I have got a lot of products, so I try to save money. All right, so we're just stamping it up, popping it on. And don't press too hard, because sometimes if you press, you can press the rubber, and it spreads a bit, which spreads the ink and makes it look a bit fun. But as you can see, it's worked fine. If you want to, if you're not sure and you want it to be darker, just do it again. Especially when it comes to sentiments. When you're doing embossing and stuff like that, that's different. There you go. All right, that is the base of our card. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful. All right, so we'll get that out of the way. All right, and now the base of the card, which we've already done, we've already discussed. Now, the other thing I did want to point out is that this does fit into a C6 envelope, being this size. Um, and I'll show you, just for those um, people who may not actually believe me, I'm sure you all believe me. Um, yeah, so this is a uh, our Whisper White C6 envelopes from Stampin' Up. This is the envelopes themselves. I haven't opened this pack, but as you can see, it fits perfectly into the envelope. So there's no reason why you can't do these sizes. Okay? All right. So now we're going to stick it onto our platform. Give it a bit of dimension, unless you prefer to do it flat. That's your option. That's your choice. It, um, I like a bit of, obviously, you know, a bit of dimension always helps. So we're going to be putting some um, dimensionals. I'm a bit rusty, guys. I haven't filmed for a while. But, you know, I am intending on certainly getting back into my crafting because I have missed it. So, <gasps> oh, look what I just did. Oh no, no, that'll work. Oh, will it work? Oh, it will. I put, <laughs> I put it onto the base of the card instead of the back of my mat. But that's okay. It'll work. Because look, there we go. Hopefully, yes, it will work. <laughs> Whoops, oopsie daisy. So, it will. Take all of these off. All the fingers and thumbs. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can get this right. There's probably a reason why we don't. Oh, I could have turned it over actually. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So let's make sure we have got the sides right. And it's even Stevens. Yep, I think that's pretty good. And of course, we have got our lovely card. So the next thing that we want to use is a bit of bling. Of course, we have to have bling. And I have got some. Somewhere here. Cannot go without using bling, right? Oh. And I think I used um, silver on the other ones, but uh, oh, I won't use those. I won't use those. I'll use the silver. Oh, got plenty of these. Love my bling. Yeah, we'll use these ones. So. Again, you can just put them wherever you choose. Where's my original? Here we go. My original. Yeah. Oh, I did use those ones. Oh, okay, good. I, I wasn't going to show you because these are new, but I did use them. Okay, so these ones are actually new in our new catalogue. They're round and there's also teardrop shapes. Oh, and they're really good. These are clear. And... Uh, oh, this is... Is that them? No, that's not them. 
these are cl there's clear ones and there is oh standing right here. I think yeah, those are the clear ones. So when you put them on, they go straight through the card. Very difficult to see, I suppose. You could probably colour them with um, your um, blend, uh, your alcohol markers. And these ones are the shiny ones. So these are the ones that I'm using. And I'm going to be using um, two of the big ones here. And these are nice and flat too. So when you're mailing out your card to somebody, they're not going to get pulled. They're actually a lot flatter than I've seen before. So I really like that I do when I put them on. Oh. Okay. And something wrong there. Let's try again. I think this tool is a bit sharp. It's dividing it. All right, so we pop one there. I didn't use too many of the big round ones because I liked the little ones as well. And there. Uh, little diamantes as well. I suppose I should be using that pick tool. Uh, oh, okay. Don't know that one even. Oh, there it is. Oh. Um, yeah, you could be using that pick tool, but I haven't got it to be honest. But that's okay. Oh, it's just enough to dress it up, and it just changes everything. It's so pretty when that happens. I love that aspect of putting on bling. It just looks so beautiful. There we go. I think that should do it. Oh, 26 minutes. I have gone over. I am out of practice. All right. So there are... Oh, Am I right? Yes. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, it's pretty hard to see on the camera. It doesn't give it any, do it any justice, but I'm sure that you will love creating um, a card to give to somebody like that. And of course, you can change your sentiment. It doesn't have to be that. It can be whatever you want. And it does fit into the C again, C six envelopes. So thank you very much for joining me and for your patience today. I do look forward to actually sending, uh, sorry, doing some more tutorials, especially with that paper. I can't wait to get started on that. And um, I hope to catch you soon. Take care, blessings to everybody, and um, I'll see you next time with a new tutorial. Bye for now.